Hey guys, this is Austin. This is the humble Nintendo Switch. And while some might want to use it in its puny normal state, well of course here, we need to build the ultimate Nintendo Switch. One of the nice things about the Switch is that as a handheld console, there's actually a lot that we can do as far as the aesthetics, which is where this comes in. This is a shell exchange as well as a different shell for the Joy-Cons. Now if you know anything about the world of Joy-Cons, you're probably familiar with this incredibly handsome gentleman, Mr. Kevin Kenson. You've opened up a Joy-Con or two, my friends. A couple. Two hours later. That is a Snapdragon cable. I've never done that. We basically just ruined this Joy-Con. We, we? we just broke the Joy-Con. So um, we'll be back tomorrow once we actually sort out this Joy-Con mess. <laughs> so a day later, we have a magically completed Joy-Con swap. Never don't, mind what happened in between. Well, don't worry about yeah, this part. That's not that. that we need a, a replacement or anything. I got to say, though, this actually looks really cool. If you guys want to know how to do the Joy-Con swap for yourself, Kevin has actually done a full video showing you not only the different shells, but also how to do stuff like the D-pad swap. Yeah, so I actually did one specifically on these Atomic Purple ones that so had. So cool, dude. Just kind of just seeing whether it works or not, which it actually works great, so yeah, check that out. Out of the box, something the Switch doesn't really have a lot of is internal storage, and especially with games like LA Noir, which require like 15, 20 gigs of storage to actually just install it, even if you have the cart. What you're gonna probably wanna pick up is a micro SD card. And thankfully, you can even get like 128 gig cards for like 40 bucks. Thankfully, this is pretty much the easiest thing you can do to a Switch. Just open up the kickstand, and when you suddenly have 128 gigs of storage. <laughs> After the Joy-Con swap, nothing else is exciting. <laughs> One of the things that makes the Switch interesting is the idea that it is a portable console that can be docked. However, one of the problems is, is that you actually can scratch the screen if you're not careful, as the inside of the dock is pretty much just hard plastic. That's where a good glass screen protector comes in. Okay, I think these notches are actually gonna make it a little easier for me. Let's see. One screen protector fully enabled. So this is starting to look cool, but we do not have the ultimate Nintendo Switch yet. Next, we have the wired LAN adapter to get this guy up on ethernet. Wow, that's actually a pretty big adapter. So, now that we're in here, Oh, there we go. So we show that we're actually we're connected over ethernet. Something else you can use is the power plate. The idea here is that not only is this a portable charger that you can drop your Joy-Cons on, but it will also charge your Switch. The Switch has okay battery life, but generally speaking, the Joy-Cons actually do last quite a while. However, it's nice to be able to have a little bit of a bigger battery if you really want to get some extra juice out of the Switch. This comes in a few different pieces. So there's the dock itself, which you will drop the battery on. And what you should do here is if we take off our Joy-Cons, they should just slide right onto the battery. So by default, they will start charging the Joy-Cons, and you can just use it like this and then drop it into the dock to charge the entire thing. However, so with this tiny USB-C cable that it comes with, we actually can charge the Switch using our Joy-Con charger. So if we plug this end into the Switch, and this end into the top, we should in theory get a charge. Hey, now charging. So if you want to use your Switch like this, you can get triple charge action, even though you might as well just put the Joy-Cons on here because it'll charge it anyway. But, um, you know, I don't really have anything to say. It's just, this is the thing. Okay, I will be the first to admit that our stand could use a little bit of work, which is where the play stand comes in. So the way this is supposed to be used is that it's actually going to be a stand that you can use to fully adjust where the switch is going to be standing while still being able to charge it. Hey, it works. Um, okay, this is not the most ridiculous setup ever, but say you want a dock that's going to be a little bit more portable than what Nintendo throws in the box. Well, that's where this comes in. So on one end, we have USB-C, but on the other, we have not only USB-A, but we also have HDMI. Oh, look, we're even on ethernet now. This is fully portable. Oh, dude, this is so good. And it looks totally the same. Like I can't see any like latency or any real issues with this. Look at this. This is not the most ridiculous thing we've ever built. This actually is like mildly practical. We did it. We actually have something that's not totally stupid. Well, at least yet. All right, Mr. Kevin Kenson, please come in here for a second. We have our switch going into a USB-C hub, which is being powered by a battery bank. It's going HDMI out to the display and we have a USB ethernet adapter all in glorious 1080p. This is super cool and that uh, I'm really proud of what we just accomplished, even though it doesn't make any sense. Well, it, it makes sense, it's just 1000% unnecessary, but it's awesome. Some say unnecessary, <laughs> some say ultimate. Ultimately unnecessary. <laughs> <laughs> but say you wanna build the ultimate, actually portable Nintendo Switch. Well, that is where this monstrosity comes in. 
This is a 10,000 milliamp hour battery case for the Switch. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> this weighs just as much as the Switch. So I just need to plug this in and then pop the cable in on the bottom. And then, okay, so now we are charging with this giant battery bank. So what's cool here is that not only do you have an additional USB-A if you want to run another accessory, but it also has USB-C power in. So if you really want to get crazy, we can double up our batteries. Oh, there we go. So now we have a portable setup with double batteries. And the kicker is, see, get it, kicker? We actually have a decent kickstand because this has one built in and it kind of works, right? Right, right. You know, I think most sane people would see this and go, this is a horrible mistake, you should stop. But not us, because we double down. This is the clip grip. To be clear, this clip is meant for a smartphone. So not only do we have our smartphone here with all the chats and stuff up, but there's also a small battery built into the grip which is charging the Joy-Cons. However, there's no way this is gonna work. Oh, 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 it does, it does. Oh, wait, 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 hang on. I've got to just bend it a little bit. It's like literally maxed out on the lip. Oh, come on, oh, come on. We got it. It works. Don't worry about the tuck tape. I can play really gently. When you clicked on the ultimate Nintendo Switch video, I hope this is what you had in mind. Also, we can't turn the volume down because we taped over the volume buttons. <laughs> so we've learned a lot today. Most notably, some of the stuff is pretty good. This Type-C dock is actually awesome. But of course, if you guys wanna check out any of this stuff, the links will be in the description. And let me know what you guys wanna see next time on building the ultimate terrible idea. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one.